This question deals with a patient presents to the emergency room complaining of worsening headache, confusion, and intermittent vomiting. She is admitted but later dies in the hospital. Exam of the brain at autopsy shows enlargement of the lateral, third, and a normal sized fourth ventricle. Where is the most likely site of obstruction in this patient? So the most likely site of obstruction is obviously cerebral of aqueduct, which is between the third and the fourth ventricle. You can read up more about this, page 448, first date, 2012. Now there is something else I want to talk about. So let's say this is the lateral ventricle. Just go with me here, okay? I'm ridiculously bad when it comes to drawing. This is the third ventricle, and let's say this is the fourth ventricle. And obviously this is the cerebral of aqueduct, and this is where the obstruction is. Now, where exactly is CSF made? CSF is made in the choroid plexus. What exactly is choroid plex plexus? So the inside of the ventricles have these little invaginations, okay? And I'm going to expand these invaginations right here. So they look like so. And these invaginations are made up of columnar, I should make this more columnar-like, columnar cells. And these columnar cells are called ependymal cells. But this is not the only thing that really makes the choroid plexus. The choroid plexus is also made by blood vessel inside. But this is a special type of blood vessel. Why? Because these blood vessels have fenestrations in them. And it allows certain substances to go in. And this is unique to these blood vessels because this kind of fenestrations is not seen in any other blood vessel in the CNS. So together, this whole unit together is called the choroid plexus. So these choroid plexus are present all in all the in three vent all the three ventricles. Now this choroid plexus collects the CSF. CSF, you know, they collect and come to the fourth ventricle and they move on to these two pathways called foramen of foramen of Magenti and foramina of Lushka. Okay, so CSF enters the, the foramen of Magenti and foramen of Lushka, and this CSF then goes to the subarachnoid granulation. So there are other granulations, and this subarachnoid granulation picks this CSF up and it shuttles it into the venous drainage. So this is this is the veins. Pretty much what happens is the CSF enters from the subarachnoid granulations onto the veins and onto the systemic circulation. That's how CSF travels.